In Seoul, South Korea, members of the Myeongsang Church get up early every day to pray. They've been doing this for 35 years. The results? Well, it's become one of the biggest churches in the world. And as Heather Sells reports, they believe those prayers will help bring freedom to their neighbors in North Korea. In the early morning in Seoul, South Korea, thousands of people stream out of a downtown church, passing the thousands of others who are waiting in the cold and the dark to go inside. When the signal comes, they begin streaming inside. Some eager not to be late scurry down the street to arrive on time. And this is why they've come. The 6 a.m. prayer service at Myeonsun Church. This is the second of four early morning services the church holds every day. Christians cannot live without faith and prayer, even for a moment. I believe morning prayer is God's blessing for us, so I am joyfully attending the gathering, even though the church is far and it takes long. Today is a special gathering, a celebration, as the church commemorates 35 years of early morning prayer. Church leaders from around the world are here for the week-long event. Reverend Samwon Kim started this church in 1980. Since then, it's grown to more than 120,000 members. He credits that success to prayer and an unyielding commitment to historic Christian truths. The power of church is from the gospel and the Bible and the tradition that we inherited from the ancestors. If we preserve those values, the world will follow us and we can lead this era. Today, well into his 70s, Pastor Kim still leads two morning services. Myeonsan Church is the largest Presbyterian church in the world. It has planted 24 churches and supports more than 500 missionaries in 63 countries. The church also supports a children's home, a hospital, and other social ministries. Pastor Kim says that it's prayer that has made all this ministry possible. And he and his church believe that if they ask, God will do the same for their kinsmen in North Korea. North Korea is in despair, but at the same time it is very hopeful in Christ. Isaiah 9 says the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. I believe the time of gospel must come to them. We need prayer to save North Korea. God will work on them through our prayer. He must liberate the land and perform the miracle to open the way in the desert for the unification of North and South. North and South Korea have been separated for 65 years. Since the armistice was signed, South Korea has grown into a modern state with a booming economy. North Korea is one of the most isolated nations on Earth ruled by a family of dictators who repress its people and threaten the world with nuclear holocaust. Here, on the border of North and South, people come to look into the hermit kingdom and to leave messages for their families on the other side. Dear mom and dad, please stay peaceful in heaven. Your son, Gwang Chol, was here. Also, there are many messages from Koreans saying, I hope South and North will be reunited as soon as possible. At Myeonsan Church, the people pray passionately for reunification. Among them is a group of North Korean refugees now living in the South. Though they're free, it's hard to escape the grip of the totalitarian regime just across the border. Actually, North Korean defectors have a trauma by the North Korean regime. We often have a nightmare of being taken to the North. Whenever I wake up in the morning, I feel the freedom, but become sorrowful thinking about my family, who are living perilously without freedom in the North. These refugees came to Christ after escaping the North, but they saw firsthand the government's persecution of Christians. In the North, the Christians were singled out for torture. They were discovered because of their knees, because they kneeled to pray. The Christians were separated and right away sent to other places, such as concentration camp. Still, the church in North Korea is growing. One reason is North Koreans who visit China are being converted to Christianity by missionaries on the border. And despite the risk of imprisonment or even death, some of them return to preach the gospel.
After they go back to the north, they evangelize others one by one in basement, and then the newcomers bring their families or friends as well. In this way, the gospel is being spread secretly. If this comes out, whole family will be murdered. So the churches are performing in basement, in secret, but actively. Meanwhile, those who have found safety in the south cry out for their families in the north. Every human being has the right to freedom, but in the North, this basic right is restricted. I am praying to God earnestly to allow this blessing for the people in the North. Believing that these fervent prayers will avail much for the people of North Korea. Heather Sells, CBN News. The church also helps support a Christian TV station in Seoul. In fact, our friends at C Channel Broadcast CWN in Korean to some 12 million viewers there.